Hello, happy Teach Me Tuesday on this freezing cold and maybe snowy where you are Tuesday. I just got back from my fun trip to Omaha where I was with my nursing school BFF and back on the Creighton campus and it was so fun. And you've been following me on social media. You may have seen that I was working on this car seat slide deck while traveling. So here we are. Today we're going to talk about car seat safety in the NICU. Um, if you go back to my Instagram page, I will be linking a video about the fake car seats, which we'll talk about in a couple slides, but I just want to mention that that is, will be linked there on my um, Instagram page. But car seats are important for all infants, but it's not just about infants, but that is where we first get exposure to tell parents about the importance of car seat and car seat safety for their child through their lifetime, actually. Um, they talk about it in prenatal classes. We do discharge teaching, whether you're in the NICU or just on mom baby or postpartum or um, your LDRP floors, whatever you call that. The baby is always discharged in a car seat. So it is the most important thing that we are truly teaching through the spectrum of an infant's life. Car seats are important for ever. My children were um, last summer, were in a car accident with another driver. We're on the interstate and uh, my Let's see, was she nine? Let's see, she just turned, she's about to turn 11. Yeah, so she was nine at the time, was still in a booster. My five-year-old was still in a five-point harness. I just think it is so important that we know that these car seats, the kids have to stay in them for a long period of time. So if we can start when they're infants, we can really teach parents that throughout their child's life. In the NICU, we also have to be really sure to make sure that their airway is staying open when they're in their car seat, that they are developmentally positioned in the car seat for their safety. And because they're often just so small, you know, car seats, we're gonna look at all the different types here. So let's look here. These are some of those common car seats that we see. And what we recommend in the NICU, of course, is for that rear facing infant car seat. This is one of um, many references that I found out on the internet. There's so many references, but I think this is a really important one that all parents could even be given to really show that a child is in a car seat for a long period of time. Um, I've had someone say, oh, they're big enough now, or they weigh 110 pounds, they can ride in the front seat. I have a six foot one 14 year old. He probably weighs 150 now. I didn't let him ride in the front until he was 12. And it has to do with their way that their bones are developed. So it's not just about a baby size. So when we look at these car seats, we have car seats that don't have a minimum size on them. So when I started in the NICU, I never, we couldn't really find car seats for less than five pound babies. And now we discharge babies at four pounds, sometimes maybe right on the cusp of four pounds. So there are car seats that go smaller, some that don't have a lower weight. But even they'll say that sometime and the baby still doesn't fit the best in that seat. So it is about how the baby is best fit. On this side, actually that infant car seat is the Kiko key fit. Some of those car seats come with an infant head you know piece and sometimes we have to take it out because in those premature babies it pushes them forward just enough that it is obstructing their airway so it's important to look it says up to 30 pounds so it's kind of saying right there like hey this is a great seat for a small baby but it may not be the best seat for your baby or the baby that you're discharging that day if we look here this is from the wisconsin um public health page. It also talks about how long a child should be rear facing. So in America, most of our states have a law for one year. Some have gone to two years. In some European countries, they stay rear facing for about five years, sometimes even longer. So really it's keep them rear facing as long as you can. And again, that has to do with the impact of the seat. And you definitely don't wanna be turning them around before they're 20 pounds. You can imagine that some of our smallest babies may take a period of time to get to that 20 pound mark. So we wanna have that infant car seat installed rear facing in the back seat using a latch system or the thing where the seatbelt goes through and it latches it in for you. I remember when my car seats changed to that, I was like, wait, am I not using the latch anymore? I was like all confused. I read through my manual and, you know, really seeing how is this seat going to best install in the car? So this infant car seat rear facing installed in the back seat in the middle is going to be the best possible place for the baby. When we talk about proper fitting, 
we were really looking at that recline. When we talk about how we get that baby into that adjustable position, so we say that 45 degree angle, many car seats will have a little leveler on them, which will tell you if you're in the right place, but not all car seats. But that kind of helps keep the baby's head from doing that forward flop. The harness straps should fit snugly. They should be flat against the baby's chest, and they should be as they go backwards, right, the steps are going in. If you put your hand straight forward, it should be at or below the level of the baby's shoulders. The chest clip could be at the armpit level. We always talk about the tickle position. That's where that should go. It keeps the straps in the right position, keeps them from sliding off, moving around in there. Bulky clothing, like I can imagine. I was not at work but today and this weekend, but it is literally negative degrees here. It is very tempting to bundle your children in these warm clothes and put them in the car seat. But really, those layers can compress and the harness can't get to their chest level. And so we want to remind people to put blankets over them. We have great like those fleece things that you can kind of zip them up in now, things that we can put over the car seat, but nothing between the baby and the straps. And then those aftermarket products. When I realized, you know, when I became a NICU nurse and started learning all these things about car seat, first of all, it scared me about all the things I used to babysit with, nanny with, wild things we used to put kids in. But when you go to like Babies R Us or Target or in these places and you see these things next to the car seat that's like, oh, best for their head positioning, it like infuriates me. The companies can sell these aftermarket products to parents who may not know better. So the reason that we say no aftermarket products is so that because the chair has not been crash dusted with it and we don't know how it would affect the baby moving within the car seat. So if you kind of take all this together and you look at it, this is a picture of a baby from the Kika website. And so we see that head support that came with the car seat. You can see the Kiko brand on the second level, um, and it'll actually be on the one behind the baby's head, too. You see that the straps are at or below the baby's shoulder. Those little straps that come on the car seat are another thing that may need to be taken off in the smallest baby because the babies are just so small, it kind of scrunches them in there. That chest clip is at the armpit level. There's no gap between the buckles. Some car seats are going to have multiple levels for the strap that goes um, kind of at in between the legs at the hip level. And you want to make sure that there's no hip splay because that can really be hard for the babies. And then that thin layer of clothing and no coat. If there's not an adjustment kind of at the crotch buckle, you want to be putting a roll in there to keep the baby from sliding down. So you get the baby and you put your their hips kind of at that back line so you can get them aligned into the car seat and then start making the adjustments. I always adjust from the hips up. So I'm pulling those straps up and then pulling the cinchers down so that we can really make sure that, that baby, those baby's hips are in the back and all the way in. It's important to um, re to check for these recalls and issues that come up with car seats. Having parents register their car seat when they get it is going to be very important um, because then they will send you if something gets recalled on your seat. You want to look for those obvious design flaws. We have seen some fake car seats coming in. That's the video I will link in my Instagram about um, the fake car seats. And it's kind of scary. It says it's a car seat. We have parents that can only afford so much. They order this car seat, and it's actually just kind of like an infant seat. It doesn't have that thing where it has, um, hey, this has been from the Federal Motor Vehicle Safety Standards. We also have one that says it's safe to go on airplanes. You want to be looking for these labels, for these labels that say what, who was crash shifted for, what are the best size of the baby, knowing where these recalls are, giving parents this website, checking the website, going in and saying, hey, has this car seat experienced any recalls before we put your baby in here, and especially before we send them home. So another fun topic that's going on is the car seat trial. So car seat trials have been part of NICU discharge for quite some time. And really, it's this idea of can the baby sit at that 45 degree angle alone for an extended period of time and keep their heart rate, respirations, and saturations in a good place. There is new evidence to suggest that the CAR-C trial does not predict any sort of long-term outcomes for a baby and, in fact, can prolong hospitalization. There is a great episode, I think it's episode 144, from the Incubator podcast that reviews the research regarding car seat trials. Highly recommend that. Um, I also will link that on my Instagram stories. I will make a favorite on car seats if you want to check that out. It's a great, they kind of talk about um, Kaiser Permanente in California did this whole 
study and they they actually stopped doing car seat trials there and they saw studied if there was any detrimental outcomes and they did not find any so at this time the aap still recommends that babies born less than 37 weeks and less than 2500 grams sit in a car seat for 90 minutes up to 120 minutes if the parents have our longer car ride and watch for these things failure criteria is apnea for greater than 20 seconds bradycardia of heart rate less than 80 beats per minute for 10 seconds a desaturation of less than 90 for 10 seconds or more. So this is what we're looking for. We, where I currently practice, we really stress the idea that instead of the baby failing the car seat trial, we talk about how they weren't ready fully or they were practicing sitting in their car seat. We also talk about it as an angle tolerance test. The car seat is not the only time a baby sits in a 45 degree angle, right? You think about a swing, a bouncy chair, even parents' arms, right? This is like very similar, like where is my own camera? To that 45 degree angle. So we're just trying to make sure that the baby is in the safest position. And so that's what we're really stressing with parents. So as part of parent education, we want them to be the one to place the baby and fit them into the car seat. We wanna to talk to them about those no aftermarket, pro after, aftermarket products. Talk about car seat installation. Do you have a demo seat that you can bring out? Where can parents go to get it checked? Where are um, car seat installation checking locations in the cities that you live in? Do you have a certified car seat technician that can come and look at the baby's car seat? Make sure they're sending in their registration. Talk about this car seat trial, the angle tolerance test for all the things we talked about, that this is a position that your baby is going to frequently be in and we wanna make sure that they can safely sit there and that their heart rate, respirations and saturations will stay above normal. And then remember not to use a car seat as a sleeping location. Um, babies are not meant to sit in that position for a long period of time. It is best to remove a sleeping baby from a car seat and put them safely back to sleep in their crib, bassinet bed. Um, it can get into this easy habit. I have three kids, I know what it's like. You bring that sleeping baby in in their little bucket seat and you just wanna let them sleep in there, but really getting them out and getting them into a safe sleep location. So car seat safety is a huge part of our discharge education. Really, if your baby's taking 50% PO feeds, the parents need to bring their car seat in. We need to start checking it for recalls, making sure they've got their base installed in the car, making sure that they know that they have time to buy the correct size. Maybe they bought a seat that says five to 30 pounds and their baby's gonna go home at four pounds. What can we do to get their safe, baby safely home? Um, you know, we wanna go in the car seat that they're going to go home in after they've had the proper fitting, after they've had the trial that they may need um, within the NICU. We also want to make sure that the parents know kind of, hey, what's the next step? How does my baby, when do we move the straps up? All of that's going to be in their manual. Remind them the manual is their best friend. And if they lose their manual, most manuals are available online. We had a car seat recently that I had never seen before. And there was like three of us reading through page by page of this thing, trying to figure out, it was actually like how to loosen the straps. It took a minute, but we figured it out by using that manual. So this is just a quick review on car seats, the importance of car seats. Please check out my, you know, the Instagram story reminders, um, the little, you know, kind of where it saves the stories. I will put a link to both the video on fake car seats and what is showing up out there and to the incubator podcast about um, car seat trials and their place in the NICU setting. Have a great Tuesday, and I will see you next week. Hopefully, it will be a lot warmer when I see you again.